I'm here with Van Jones. Thank you so much for joining us today. We're excited right. to talk to you. Glad to be here. And, okay, so first off, you started in communications and political science. And then a very long time ago. Yes, and then <laughs> transitioned to law school. Mm -hmm. So was this sort of like a natural progression for you? Good. Well, um, I was really lucky. I went to the University of Tennessee at Martin. Mm -hmm. Most people have heard of the University of Tennessee at Knoxville. Okay. I went to Martin, which is the other end of the state. Most people have not heard of that, but it had uh, and still has one of the best communications departments uh, in the country. Um, and pretty much everything I do now, I learned how to do being a communications uh, department uh, major at UTM. Uh, first of all, even though I went to law school, law school is about communicating. Mm -hmm. It's about being persuasive. It's about uh, being colorful enough and interesting enough. Uh, knowing how to write a good headline is really key to knowing how to make a good argument in court. Like what is the, the essential piece of communication that you're trying to, to get across? I learned all that stuff when I was a, a communications uh, uh, undergraduate. I also got a chance to work as a copy desk intern at uh, the Jackson, Tennessee Sun. Okay. And then I was a graphic artist intern at the Shreveport, Louisiana Times. And then I worked uh, the night desk at the Associated Press right. all before I went to law school. So by the time I got to law school, I knew how to communicate and um, that served me very well ever since. So what sparked your interest in becoming such a passionate leader for so many topics? I mean everything from green jobs to civil rights, and you've become sort of a voice for all of these issues. So how has that started for you? You know, I really don't know. Um, I was born in 1968. Uh, that was a the year they killed Dr. King. They killed Bobby Kennedy. Um, the Democratic Convention was bloody because young people were speaking up for, for peace. I don't know, maybe because that was the year I was born, um, I always looked at, at that year, and I looked at those leaders, and I looked at that agenda even as a very small child, I, I used to cut out pictures of the Kennedy brothers when I was in second grade, third grade, and put them up on my uh, bulletin board in my room. Other people had, you know, rock stars or athletes or whatever. I had political guys. Um, so um, I really can't, I, I don't know why, but for me, all, everything I've done seems to be just completely commonsensical. Um, I got out of law school. There was a lot of uh, unlawful police violence happening in some parts of California. Mm -hmm. Rodney King uh, put that issue on the front pages around the world. I started working on it and tried to make a difference. Um, I started realizing that too many urban kids wind up in jail as opposed to college. I started trying to get kids out of jail into jobs. Discovered that in California at least the solar industry was taking off, organic agriculture was taking off. I said hey these kids should have green jobs not jails. So I started working on that. Um, you know, since then it turns out that there's going to be a lot of jobs in Silicon Valley. So now I'm working to try to get the same urban youth population that I was trying to keep from getting hurt by police, trying to get them employed in the um, uh, green sectors, uh, trying to keep them from hurting each other. Now I'm trying to get them jobs in Silicon Valley. Basically, I just care a lot about poor uh, kids, low, low uh, opportunity kids. My dad had been born in poverty. Uh, he joined the military, got out, put himself through college. He helped put his brother through college. He helped put a cousin through college. He put me through college and my sister, along with my mom. Uh, I just believe in you know, liberty and justice for all, you know, and equal opportunity for everybody. And I think it's easy to talk about it, but if you don't do anything about it, then I question you. Right. And do you find yourself more passionate about one topic over others? I mean, it's kind of, they kind of all fit together in some sense, but do you find yourself more passionate about one certain topic. It just depends on the hour of the day. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, uh, some, sometimes I get up and I'm super passionate about some injustice. Like, you know, right now what's going on in Ferguson, right. where that uh, uh, unarmed kid was shot uh, six times by a police officer. Look, my, my dad was a cop in the military. I, I, I'm from a law enforcement family. One of my favorite uncles was a, a cop just retired from the Memphis City Police Force. Mm -hmm. So I understand um, the, the challenges of law enforcement. Uh, but the poli police have to obey the law. The police have to obey the law. And you know, there are laws that say when you can shoot, when you can't shoot. If you start relaxing those laws, you get anarchy on all sides. So you've got to make sure that, that there's justice. So right now I'm really concerned about Governor uh, Nixon uh, in that state not being more vocal to make sure that the local officials do their jobs properly. Right. 
talk to me next week. I'll be passionate about something else. Right. Depends I on just, the time. It just it literally the hour of the day. But I have a vision about what kind of country we should be living in. Mm -hmm. It's America the Beautiful. Don't call me an environmentalist. Just say I'm for America the Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Right? Uh, don't call me an activist. Just say I'm for liberty and justice for all. Uh, I didn't say liberty and justice for all except for the gay people or liberty and justice for all except for you know the, the poor people. Right. Liberty and justice for all. Uh, I'm for the Statue of Liberty. Statue of Liberty says, give me your tired, give me your poor, give me your huddled masses who yearn to breathe free. Don't say I'm pro-immigration. Say I'm pro-Statue of Liberty. So I just have a vision about what kind of country I'm supposed to live right. in. They told me that when I was in first, second grade. And I believed it and took it seriously. How do you balance everything that is happening around you? You have so many <laughs> different projects going on at once, traveling yeah. everywhere. How, how does that all fit? You know, I don't know if I... I, I wouldn't use... Van Jones and balance in the same sentence probably ever. <laughs> so um, I don't know. You know, life is to be lived, though. Mm -hmm. That's the reality. I mean, we're here for a very short period of time. Uh, I have two little boys, um, uh, Matai and Cabral. They're little guys, and um, I was there when they were both of them were born. I was also in, in the hospital when my father passed away. You know, I've seen life and death in my own family. You know, the man ahead of me in lines, now gone, these little guys coming up behind me. Life's over, man, just like that. So if you have a dream, you should go for it. You have stuff you want to do, do it. The worst that's going to happen is it's going to be some disaster, and then you'll have a funny story to tell a year later. Um, my, my, um, I wouldn't be able to do it uh, except that you know, my wife is incredibly patient and supportive. Um, you know, she keeps it, everything together. Um, and yeah, when I have some crazy idea, uh, something, something else I want to add to the chickens and chainsaws we're trying to juggle. Like, Let's just put in one more chainsaw. What could possibly go wrong, you know? Um, she'll ask some tough questions, but she'll usually be supportive. Um, and um, I think, you know, without that kind of support, yeah. it's very, very difficult to, um, to achieve a lot. All right, great. Thank you so much for joining us, talking to us. It's been Awesome. <laughs> Good to be here.